Well, I can tell you right now, we've got another very good day in Dallas. Um, I, before we get started, I want to introduce a couple of people to you uh, that have had a significant impact not only on our announcement today, but what's happening on the Trinity. We want to say a special thank you to them. Um, first of all, the members of the Real Estate Council uh, and also the American Institute of Architects of Dallas. If you could just kind of wave a hand, say hi. We just want to give you a big thank. And also we have a number of members of the various chambers across the uh, North Texas area. And if you could just kind of wave a hand, too. We're very appreciative of what you've done. There we go. Uh, and another introduction I want to make is to a person who I can tell you we wouldn't be out, we wouldn't be at this point if it wasn't for her hard work, and that's our city manager, Mary Sue. Mary, thank you very much. Well, today we're celebrating another gift, and this is a gift that comes to us from the Trinity Trust Foundation. The Trinity Trust Foundation has made it, been a major partner of the cities, along with the Trinity Commons Foundation. Both of these organizations are dedicated to support the Trinity River Corridor Project. Trinity Trust is here to celebrate, I can tell you, a wonderful gift that's given to them for the city as they continue to raise private funds and public awareness for the most complex and the largest urban development effort undertaken by the city. It is focused on flood protection, community revitalization, and economic development. We're very thankful to them in this role. Now, two weeks ago, the Trinity Trust and the City of Dallas announced an anonymous gift. That was a donor gave us $10 million in honor of Mary McDermott Crook, who's the chair of the Trinity Trust. And if I could, Mary, could you come up here for just a moment? We got you. Um, th th this gift was to honor uh, her tireless vision of the project and everything she's done in the community. So I just want to, again, recognize Mary for your role in this gift and how much you've done for everybody in the city. So we're just so I'm appreciative of that. this color. <laughs> we're very appreciative. Thank you, Mary. And, you know, only days later, we're here to announce another special gift, which marks an amazing and extremely dynamic point in Dallas's history. Now, if you look over the last couple weeks and look forward to the next couple weeks, we have the Center for the Performing Arts, the new AT&T Performing Arts Center. That's about to open. We had the groundbreakings for the Woodall Rogers Deck Park and the new Convention Center Hotel. The State, Texas, uh, State Fair of Texas, it continues to be one of the largest of its kind. It opened, and of course, along with it, the Green Line, which is the largest construction project light rail anywhere in the nation. And of course, then, on the 24th, we had Suspense's building with the continued progress that we also saw on the Margaret Hunt Hill Bridge. Uh, it is an honor to have this new gift as part of the effort that's going forward. I can tell you that the needs of a growing city and the care that it takes to guide in the best direction forward for everyone requires the vision and the giving of civic leaders like the generous people that we have recognized and we are recognizing today. I can tell you that this gift will be a true catalyst towards helping us transform Dallas into an even more appealing city for business, residential, and environmental marketability, and also to showcase the limited spirit and the strong character of the world. The donors love the idea of creating beauty and a new form of livability and outdoor environments here in Dallas. With this in mind, the Trinity Trust has received a wonderful gift and a portion of this gift will be used to create the Dallas Design Studio. The gift is $5 million, and $2 million of that will be for the Dallas City Design Studio. The gift will fund the studio for a five-year period from 2014 uh, and operate until 2014-2015. After that time, the city will assume the cost of operation. We are very grateful for this donation from the Trinity Trust. At this time, let me go ahead and welcome Gail Thomas to the podium. She's a friend, and she is the president and the CEO of the Trinity Trust Foundation. She'll now announce the donors of this special gift and tell you a little bit more. Gail, thank you for everything you're doing. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank, thank, you, Mayor. thank you, Mayor Leppert, for your vision and your courage and for your extraordinary leadership of our great city, Dallas. Now, many of you know that next week, we will celebrate the opening, as the mayor said, of the Dallas AT&T Center for Performing Arts. And there are three, now actually two major women in this audience right now 
who have made that happen. They dreamed it, they took action, and they're seeing it to completion next week, and that's Bess Inlow and Karen Prothro. And with them was Dee Dee Rose. Thank you so much. Their vision of what they've done and the work that they've done for so many years has given Dallas a treasure that we will be enjoying for the rest of our lives and with our children and grandchildren. Now, joining them, of course, uh, is Dee Dee Rose. Dee Dee, this gift today that we are announcing, this major gift to Dallas, is given by Dee Dee and Rusty Rose. What an extraordinary tribute to Dallas for them to have the confidence and the courage that we are going to bring a vital and vibrant downtown to life. That's been the dream. I've known Dee Dee for years. I've dreamed with her for years. And that dream has always been to have a downtown people want to come to, want to live in, want to enjoy the arts, want to renew their interest in the sciences, and they want to have nature in the middle of their city, and they want to also have recreation in, their middle, in the middle of the city, and they want economic development. All of this requires enormous planning, good urban planning. Dee Dee Rose has dreamed for years to have good urban planning in Dallas downtown, and this gift supports that dream. We're very grateful to Dee Dee for her courage and her initiative in establishing this Dallas City Center, Dallas City Design Studio. And with that, I have a clip here. I need to say, Dee Dee called just a few minutes ago. She called me at 7 this morning and said, Gail, I tore the cornea in my eye and I cannot open my left eye. <laughs> it's swollen. She called just a few minutes ago. She was going to try to get here, but the doctor said, nope, you get yourself over here to my office right now. So she is not with us, and we regret that. But we will give her a copy of this video and let her know how we've all come to celebrate this remarkable gift to Dallas. Let's play this clip. I think it's rare that a city has an asset like a river running right through its heart. Now, we haven't treated that river very kindly, but we're about to. And when we do, it's going to make an enormous difference in the lives of the people in this city and really our whole region. I believe so strongly in urban planning. I think great urban plans are the lack thereof make enormous impacts on the way we live and work in a city. And this was an attempt to get a great urban plan for this enormous asset that we have. And I think we got it. I'm really serious about this moment in our history. I have never felt from so many different people in all parts of the city an excitement about the direction our city is moving. And it's something in the air. It is the stars are aligned for us now and it's happening. Dreaming a big dream and having the vision and having the courage and fortitude to carry it out really does matter and it makes a huge difference. So we thank Dee Dee Rose, we thank Rusty Rose for this remarkable gift. <clears throat> Now, several years ago, uh, when we started the Trinity Trust, I asked Dee Dee to be on the board, and right about that time read an article in the Harvard Review about an urban planner in Vancouver who had been an urban planner for 15 years and had really changed Vancouver to become what, well, we took two tours to Vancouver last year, and it seems to me that Vancouver has established itself as the 21st century city on the planet, certainly one of them. This urban planner is Larry Beasley. We brought him to Dallas. He met people here. I think he fell in love with Dallas. We fell in love with him. And he will be the special advisor to the Dallas City Design Studio. Let's hear now from Larry Beasley. We have a clip also of Larry. This was from a lecture he gave at the Trinity Trust. Water is magical in and of itself because it offers a glamorous counterpoint to the fabric of the city. It offers a natural respite uh, from the frantic man-made 
aspects uh, of the city. And it's also magical for more practical reason because you usually find with it in modern cities a stretch of land available. It's Sometimes it's port land, sometimes it's old rail yards as in Vancouver or infrastructure sites or obsolete industrial, many, many things. Sometimes it's just fallow green space, as I found in Philadelphia, that can be designed and developed from scratch. And you can use that to realize the dreams of your city, things that you cannot achieve through more infill, incremental development. And it's ironic that what we see today as an opportunity in the past was seen as a liability. Waterfronts, until the third quarter of the 20th century, were often seen as foul, dirty, smelly, unhealthy places that really polite urbanism turned away from, leaving the water's edge, as you can see in these images of Vancouver, the water I'm going to show you later developed uh, for industry, for transportation, and in many cities for vice. But with the environmental moves that started happening after the war, this, this began to change, offering our generation an unexpected opportunity. Sizable land areas well located, and this is absolutely true here in Dallas, uh, with the gleaming adjacency of the water and the natural uh, aquatic habitat of the water. And for any city to find itself in this kind of special moment it's an epical moment. And that is Larry Beasley, and there's more to come with Larry Beasley. That's just a teaser. And now I want to introduce our city manager, Mary Soon. If it were not for Mary Soon, we would not be having this focus on urban design and planning in Dallas. Thank you, Mary. I cannot tell you how excited we are about this. and. Um, a thank you to Dee Dee and Rusty Rose. Um, they are generous with their resources. They're generous with their talents. And what it means to me is they're generous in a way that looks the long term, and they always have been. And they're generous with the cultural facilities in our community and supporting them. But in addition to that, Rusty spent some time with us at City Hall working on a problem that we had that his expertise applied to and is guaranteed that the city employees have a safe, sound pension fund, and I don't know how many people realize that, but I appreciate him every day for that, and the employees do too. <laughs> Larry's right, and Dee Dee's right, it's a special time in our city, and it's, and it's especially hard in some ways, because right now, we're, we're struggling with some items, and those challenges face us every day. But again, the leadership that Dee Dee and Rusty bring of remembering the long term and remembering the future inspires us to not be looking at our feet and the small potholes that we're dealing with at our feet and look to the horizon and the future of Dallas. And bringing Larry to this scene is, is phenomenal. Um, the Trinity Trust was gracious enough to take a lot of the city employees twice to Vancouver. Uh, what we'd really like, and at that time we were talking about just understanding Vancouver, but that good, strong urban design becoming a part of our ethic, not just our planner's ethics, but everybody else in the community, in our city employee community. We make decisions every day that impact that, and to be aware of those decisions and those processes are important to the long-term future of our city. And Larry's coming at just the right time, and on a personal note, I want to tell you, I've Worked with a lot of city planners, um, been around planners a good bit, but the amazing thing about Larry is he can bring everybody together, talk with everybody, recognize what their needs and issues are, and at the same time provide the leadership that brings good urban design to the mix without alienating people, without alienating the folks that live in the neighborhoods and the area, and bring us all to look at that horizon and aspire for something greater for our communities and our neighborhood and our city. Larry's been here several times, and Gail's right. I think he likes us, <laughs> and we're excited about that. Uh, but it was important, too, because Larry's going to be a consultant that brings his wonderful ideas from around the world, and he's practicing around the world now, to our Texas doorstep. 
And so it was important that we have somebody on the local scene to direct this effort um, that reflected Larry's values and our values, had the leadership, had the interaction with the community. And I'm very pleased today to introduce to you uh, Brent Brown, who many of you know, and he is going to direct our center. We are very excited about that. Um, and this center will operate in collaboration within City Hall with all the city departments to bring this culture completely embedded in our organization. Work with Teresa O'Donnell, with Rick Galsaran at Public Works, with Zada Basura, who works in building inspection, with the economic development people. Uh, we want this not to be separate. We want the tentacles of good urban design so strongly embedded in our organization that it's a thought process that everybody goes through every day. So Brent, would you join us? What a great day for our city. Uh, Mayor, thank you for your leadership. Mary, as has been said, we wouldn't be here today without you and your advocacy for design to the trust for it's been doing to Dee Dee and Rusty. What a wonderful collection of talent and ability. And I think that what we heard from Larry and from Dee Dee is exactly right. We are at a pivotal, pivotal time in our city. Despite the economic situation of the world, this is the time to think about our future. And so I'm very excited to be here today and very grateful to be a part of this. And Mary, thank you for that introduction. Um, in addition to this, we can't do it by ourselves. Uh, Todd Howard, who's here today, is president of the AIA. We need the AIA. We have to have the partnership with the AIA and the other professional organizations, the landscape architects, the planners, and et cetera. We need this to be a collaborative group of professionals engaged in our city and engaged in design. So thank you for your work so far, and we look forward to working together to the Real Estate Council. The mayor mentioned uh, both of these organizations who had been a part of supporting this creation. We need the Real Estate Council, the development community, the financial community, the legal community, et cetera, that it represents. Again, this has to be a collaborative. So with that, and I think what Mary said about City Hall is true, there's a lot of wonderful people here and a lot of great talent here. And Larry and I are both new to the city. And in looking within the city to find a talented, gifted person that would be able to help make this happen, David Whitley has been a key part of creating this, this studio, and with that we'll be going forward as an associate director working day to day. And David, we're looking so forward to working with you. We need your leadership within bringing and galvanizing the many, many talents that are here in City Hall currently and in, in going forward with this endeavor. So, you know, first and foremost, we're going to do design work. We're going to bring design thinking, urban design, to challenges within our city along the river, along this great Trinity River that exists within our city. We're going to be a convener and an implementer. This is collaborative in its way of, as Mary said, bringing residents, neighborhood groups, developers, et cetera. And as Larry would say, way upstream before development begins. Because if we wait, we're late. We have to think about things before we get started. And again, quoting from Larry, before we position, before everyone begins to try to stake claim. Because together, we will make a more sustainable and livable city. And to that, the studio will bring design thinking as a means to weave the social, the economic, and the environmental aspects into balance. And using that in creative thinking in a way to uh, help to make a more beautiful place for all residents. Uh, so with that, you know, this is going to take time. It's not going to happen in 30 days. And it's going to take an awful lot of hard work. And it's going to happen through a collaborative process of holistic thinking where design can be that, be that tool, that, that process. And you're going to hear us talk a lot about process. Uh, process will lead us to the product that we need and I think that we all strive for. So with that, thank you. The challenges ahead are many. Thank you for being here, and we look forward to working together and making this happen. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, each one of you, for being here and what you're doing. Uh, I want to introduce Delia Hasso, who is my colleague on the City Council. Delia, thank you for being here. We appreciate it. So again, thank you. Well, what's the takeaway from today? Well, I think there's a couple. Um, number one is another great thing that's happening in Dallas. As I said, you look over the last month, look at the next month, I don't think any city can compare to what's happening in our city. Great advancements, a city moving forward. Number two, 
another individual who stepped up and said, it's important, and I'm going to make a financial and a time contribution to continue to push this city forward. We're very much in debt to Dee Dee Rose, uh, Mary McDermott Cook, the people who are making investments today in the city of Dallas that's going to make a difference. Number three, the importance of the Trinity River Corridor Project. We've talked about it in terms of its recreation, transportation, clearly the flood control, the economic development it will give us. But now you see another glimpse of how important this project can be. By taking and looking at design in a different way, by bringing the best minds literally in the world today to Dallas, we again are going to shape the face of Dallas. And number four, you see a project that continues to move forward. We've raised over $60 million of private money over $60 million of private money. 25% of that has been in the last couple weeks. There's challenges in this project, but step by step by step, we're moving forward to realize what Dallas can be. Thank you all for being here. Appreciate it.